Hello and welcome back. You know what's worse than a polar bear? A Cartesian bear. So in example three, we're trying to find the area of the region that lies inside both r equals one, that familiar unit circle, and the rows r equals two sine two theta. Figure five shows both the circle and the rows. Remember that if you're gonna graph this, if, you don't, if you're not given the graph, uh, then you can think about this graph as like this. Uh, if the rows has sine, so if you have sine n theta, so that you have this rows, if, rows is, if the rows is a sine, then the first petal is gonna be in the first quadrant. So, and then the number of petals that you're gonna have is dependent on the coefficient in front of theta. If it's even, you double that coefficient in front of theta, and that's how many petals you're gonna have. And you're gonna get all the petals as theta ranges from zero to two pi. If it's odd, you'll have as many petals as the coefficient in front of theta, and you're gonna go through all of those petals when theta goes from zero to pi, and then again from pi to two pi. Okay, so we're gonna to try to find the area of the region that lies inside both of these curves, which is uh, right here in the first quadrant and here in the second quadrant. Let me try to shade these in. So we're looking at this region in the first quadrant, looking at whoops, this region in the second quadrant, and in the third quadrant, and in the fourth quadrant. Okay, yeah, that makes a cool little design. <clears throat> All right, <laughs> maybe not. We're just a bunch of scribbly looking uh, green lines. Now, one of the things that we're gonna need to find is, well, for, for one thing, notice that we only we can find one of these petals or one of these little regions that we're trying to find and multiply it by four to get the area of all the regions. So that's how we're going to reduce our problem down. We're just going to focus on the first quadrant and try to solve, try to figure out the area of that region in the first quadrant. Now, what's going to be important though is to find the intersection points of these curves. Uh, so that's going to help divide up our our region in intervals of theta. Let's find that out first. Let's figure out where these two curves intersect. Well, to find out where two polar curves intersect, we're gonna set the two curves equal to each other. So we have two sine two theta equals one. If we can find a theta value that makes the r values the same, then we're at the same point. On the, on the polar coordinate system, and so we're uh, at an intersection point. So let's see if we can find these theta values. Well, we have a single trig function, so let's isolate the trig function, and then try to think which, uh, so where sine is gonna be a half. So sine will be a half in quadrants one and three, and the reference number or the reference angle uh, is going to be pi over 6. Oops. So that will include pi over 6 and I totally got the wrong quadrant here. <laughs> this is quadrants 1 and 2. Sine is positive in quadrants 1 and 2 because sine is positive or y is positive. Just checking to see if you're paying attention. <laughs> okay, so, oops. So the other one is in quadrant two. So that would be pi over six and five pi over six. Whew, one mistake after another. You really gotta watch me on this video. <laughs> watch carefully. Or I'm probably gonna make a mistake. <laughs> okay, so what I'm gonna do is uh, decide on a color. And uh, so if two theta is equal to pi over six, then we've got a solution to this equation. Or if it's equal to five pi over six, then we've got a solution to the equation. So let's write up those two possibilities. 
pi over 6, or technically any coterminal angle. And the other possibility is 5 pi over 6 plus 2 pi k, which makes it so that uh, we're dealing with all the possible coterminal angles as well. Dividing each of these by 2, we're going to get pi over 12 plus pi k. And 5 pi over 12 plus pi k. Then running through all of the theta values on the interval from 0 to 2 pi. Because if we go around again, we're going to be going around the, the rows again, and we don't want that. We only want to go from 0 to 2 pi. We're going to get pi over 12, 5 pi over 12. Then if we add pi to each of these, we'll get more angles. If we add pi to pi over 12, we're going to get 13 pi over 12. And then 17 pi over 12. So those are all the theta values where the curves are intersecting. Let's check them out. Well, pi over 12 would be the first one here. 5 pi over 12, that's still in quadrant 1. 13 pi over 12, that's a little bit after uh, pi, like 12 pi over 12, which would be pi. And then 17 pi over 12 is going to be over here. So actually, we didn't quite get them all. There are this intersection point here and here in quadrant 2, and then the intersection points in quadrant 4. So how can we miss those when we set the two polar curves equal to each other? Where are the other intersection points? Well, remember that with polar coordinates, you can represent a single point in different ways. You can use a positive r value, you could use a negative r value, you could use various theta values. It turns out that if you think of this r equals 1 curve, this unit circle, as r equals negative 1, then you'll get the other intersection points. So r equals 1 you can rewrite as just r equals negative 1, and you've got the same circle. But now if you set the two, those two curves equal to each other, you'll get 2 sine 2 theta equals negative 1. And then when you solve that equation, you're going to get uh, angles here in the third and the fourth quadrant, which then when you divide by 2 will give you angles in the second and the fourth quadrant. So that's where the other intersection points are. They're at r equals negative 1, in essence. Let's get, go ahead and zoom in on quadrant 1 by drawing a close-up version of the curves in quadrant 1. There's the petal of the rose. There's the part of the circle that we're most interested in. It continues on uh, down here and, and, and so on, but we're going to be most interested in that part of the curve. Now our region is going to be inside the curve and inside the, the rows, inside this petal. So it's right in here. If we think about our interval of theta values that we're going to need to set up our integral, we're going to have to start at theta equals 0 and go all the way to theta equals pi over 2. Let's draw those in the picture. So this is theta equals 0. Oops, <laughs> theta equals theta. Theta equals 0. And theta equals pi over 2. Definitely our, our region that we're interested in is bounded by those two. As soon as you make theta a little bit bigger than, than 0, now you're inside of that region that we're trying to find the area of. So we're going to start from theta equals 0, and then we're going to go up to this point right here, the intersection point. I'm going to draw the theta line going out to that intersection point. That was theta equals pi over 12, right? 
that's a key point because if we think about the area from theta equals 0 to theta equals pi over 12, the r values are determined by the rows. Right? If we plug in uh, to, to, get, to get that area, we're going to go from the origin out to the rows. So the r values are determined by the rows. But as soon as you cross uh, theta equals pi over 12, your theta values are going to be determined by the circle. Sorry, your r values will be determined by the circle. Draw this one. Go with that. until you get to the next intersection point. Which is theta equals 5 pi over 12. At that point, you're no longer using the circle to get the radius, the uh, r values. Instead, you're using the uh, rows again. And it's a very thin little sliver of an area there. But uh, you can imagine that these lines are going out to the, the rows to be able to get the area of that uh, interval from theta equals pi over 12, 5 pi over 12 to theta equals pi over 2. So what we're going to do is we're going to have to break up this, uh, this area into three parts. The first part will be this first sliver from theta equals 0 to pi over 12. The next part will be the integral from theta equals pi over 12 to 5 pi over 12. And then we're going to integrate from 5 pi over 12 to pi over 2. Let's set up those integrals. So integrate from 0 to pi over 12 out to the rows. And remember the rows was given, the r values of the rows were 2 sine 2 theta. So 2 sine 2 theta squared d theta. Then we have plus the area out to the circle from pi over 12 to 5 pi over 12. One half. Um, now the circle's r value was 1 squared d theta. And then we have plus the area of that last sliver out to the pedal, out to the rows. That's going to be the integral from 5 pi over 12 to pi over 2 of 1 half the rows squared d theta. These would be the integrals that you would set up to uh, compute the area of the, just that one pedal. Now here, if you figure all that out, you're going to get pi over 3 minus root 3 over 4 but that's just the area of one pedal. Remember that we have uh, so the area inside of one pedal. And remember we have four of them. So the total area is going to be four times that. Which is four pi over three minus root three. Okay, so a couple of things to mention about this. One is if you notice there's some symmetry going on here between the first integral and the last integral. If you notice that symmetry, feel free to take advantage of it. Just make sure that there actually is some symmetry going on. Uh, so you could write 2 times the integral from 0 to pi over 12 uh, here and not write this, second, uh, this, this last in, uh, integral. 
the other thing is if you want to figure out the, the uh, second integral right here, the area out to the circle, you could just figure out what fraction of uh, the full circle that is and multiply that fraction times the area of the unit circle. So it would be 5 pi over 12 minus pi over 12 divided by 2 pi and then times uh, pi r squared, times pi times the radius squared. Now in this case, I don't know if there's really one way that's easier or the other. It might just be easy enough to set up the integral because that's kind of what you're doing for, for all the rest of these. Um, if you get a good flow of setting up the integrals going, that's, that's okay. But either way you want to do it, that's totally fine. Um, another way you could think about it is to cut the pedal in half to figure out that by symmetry at theta equals pi over 4, you can um, then just have two integrals, uh, the th theta going from 0 to pi over 12 of the rows, and then theta is pi over 12 to theta equals pi over 4 of the circle. And then take that and multiply by 8 to get all of the, um, the, the areas in all quadrants. So there are many ways of handling these based on what kind of symmetries you find. So thank you so much for watching this video. See you in the next one.